I am delighted to be here, um, helping create a national conference, <laughs> coming from California. I would like to uh, particularly thank those who have been serving on the National Advisory Board, uh, Richard McBee from New York, Laura Kruger, curator of Hebrew Union College, also New York, Matthew Bigel, you see a little theme here. Um, Professor Meredith from Rutgers and writer on Jewish art. And uh, Judith Bryn Ingberg, who I think is here. Here she is. And uh, Robert Gloat, um, who is uh, at University of Wisconsin, uh, Professor Emeritus. So um, national, especially from a Wisconsin perspective, um, and uh, I want to particularly acknowledge and thank and pay tribute to Doug Rosenberg, who has done an incredible amount to bring this to pass. <laughs> this is uh, a lot of work and uh, passion behind the idea of the county conference. You know, a conference that brings together all the art disciplines and um, with a Jewish lens and a Jewish perspective is a very special and unique thing. And uh, I, I think that uh, we will all learn an incredible amount, both about our own disciplines and the disciplines of others. And uh, I'm really looking forward to what looks like a terrific program. We certainly had a wonderful sample of it this morning the variety. Um, so the Connie Conference has always been national in its intention out of the very beautiful um, University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, context. The, I went to University of Michigan, so there, there was always a very uh, heightened rivalry between U of M and, and U of Wisconsin. And you know, the truth is, they had lakes. We didn't. <laughs> we were always envious of the lakes and the setting and very beautiful campus, if you haven't been there. Um, but I have been playing a role of convincing the Connie family to um, actually have the conference more nationally because it is a national conference, always people coming to Wisconsin, but, you know, I think, uh, as will be proven uh, at this conference, we're going to have, you know, a more national audience here in New York than, than we could have in Wisconsin. Um, although I think it's very important that it continue to return to Wisconsin. Um, and uh, four years ago, when it was in Los Angeles, we had a lot of also Israeli participation. It was really terrific, and people still talk about it. Um, so just a, a further word about the Connie family. Very, very wonderful family. Marv can't be with us today. Uh, babe, the late Babe Connie also really shaped the intention and the accomplishments of the Connie Conference. But uh, David uh, Connie it will be joining us uh, when he can. I don't think he's here right now, but um, I don't see him. <laughs> but he will be joining us for a lot of the program. So that's wonderful that the Connie conference will be attended by a Connie to represent the family. And uh, we're so grateful to them and their support and their leadership in the Jewish arts. And uh, so. I'm really, really looking forward to this terrific program. And if you have thoughts um, about what you'd like to see in future years, please share that with Doug and I. Um, as we go forward, we want to reflect um, people's Jewish artists and um, others, you know, desires and needs in the realm of the Jewish arts, which are as far as I can tell, thriving. We are thriving. We are creating. We are making. And, um, you know, it's a very rich, wonderful 
situation and that we're trying to encapsulate and bring and share back with you. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Ruth. So my pleasure now to introduce our chair of Jewish studies and renowned scholar in Yiddish, all things Yiddish, working in the circle, all sorts of amazing things. Um, so Tony Michaels, thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. I just want to re reiterate some, some words of thanks very quickly. Um, uh, uh, I want to start by thanking Marv and uh, Babe Connie, alumni of University of Wisconsin, who really, through their uh, sheer love of the arts, um, their generosity and um, vision, uh, made this possible almost 20 years ago. Uh, Babe has since passed. Um, but uh, her memory lives on, and, and Marv remains a real staunch supporter of this program, and in fact has recently um, uh, redoubled his commitment to the, to the Connie Conference, uh, which will guarantee that the conference continues to thrive for, for many years to come. Um, uh, th their idea was to f uh, create a forum in which scholarship and uh, a performance and all kinds of artistic practice could come together and explore the Jewish dimensions of those things, keeping in mind uh, that Jewishness is something quite elastic uh, and evolving and uh, not bound by any, any fixed meaning. And, and it's really, um, uh, their, their vision has, has continued to bore, bear fruit all along. Um, uh, Marv couldn't make the trip. Uh, out here, um, but um, we're really pleased that, um, there's, uh, that Marvin Babe's son, uh, David, was able to come to, uh, from Los Angeles, and uh, he'll be around throughout the conference, and I, for one, am looking forward to meeting him. Um, I also want to thank uh, uh, Bob Sloot, uh, who is sitting right back there. Bob uh, was the former director of the Center for Jewish Studies. He was present at the very beginning when this plan was hatched to create the, the project. Um, I think uh, that took place at one of Madison's venerable diners, um, which may or may not exist anymore, uh, but the conference does. And uh, I want to thank Bob for, for stewarding this in the beginning forward stage. Um, uh, Bob's a, a professor of theater. He knows the arts well. And I'm not sure another director could have made this happen. Um, so uh, I, I want to thank Bob. For that, Bob's also going to deliver um, what looks to be a fascinating paper uh, that connects to the University of Wisconsin later on this afternoon. Um, so thank you, Bob, for, for making the journey out uh, from Wisconsin. Doug. Uh, Doug has uh, been the uh, uh, intrepid director of the Connie Conference from its beginning. Um, he does this while chairing the art department, while serving as a stalwart um, uh, a member of the Center for Jewish Studies. He does a lot of things, uh, and somehow he's able to pull off um, uh, the Connie Conference uh, and everything related to it every two years. So, so Doug, thank you, and thank you for... And I want to say thank you for, thank you for the great idea of moving it to New York City for the first time. Uh, it was in Los Angeles a few years ago, and it was high time that it come to New York City as well. So, Doug, thank you for, uh, for your, your tireless devotion. To this, and I also want to thank the 92nd Street Y for, for hosting. Uh, it's an it's an honor to be um, to be here in this in this um, storied um, uh, building, and uh, and um, what's the right word? The nice this institution of of culture uh, that is so so um, venerable in New York City, um, and so and then finally to thank all of you for coming and participating, and I look forward to meeting you and hearing uh, all the wonderful papers that, that, uh, uh, that, that look to be uh, the finest in uh, this ongoing conference so far. So again, thanks to everybody, and uh, welcome. First of all, it's just a, it's a remarkable thing for me to be here. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank Doug Rosenberg, who has been a wonderful mentor and colleague to me for ever since I joined Jewish Studies. Um, he has been stalwart, he's creative, he engages me and gets me to think differently about my own work. 
and about my place in the world, in the place, my place in the world as a Jewish woman and, um, and a Jewish scholar. And so thank you so much to Tony, who has been a wonderful director, a wonderful colleague, and I really consider that um, the Masi Weinstein Center for Jewish Studies to be um, a remarkable home of intellectual um, possibility for me, especially as a musician and as a music educator. Doug and I started batting this around 18 months ago, or as soon as we were done with the previous con conference. I almost said concert, apologies. <laughs> And it became clear to us that we need to move to the next level because the Connie Conference has been expanding. It attracts you, these brilliant scholars, people who are doing new and different things in Jewish studies. And we thought, where is the best place? And do, Doug said, we have to go to New York. And I said, that makes perfect sense. So long story short, here we are. Thank you for coming. We're very excited to see all of you here. I see some people I know. Edward, the last time I saw you was in London. I'm so glad you're here. And to be uh, working with people that, um, who are you know, connected to some of my work, uh, Naomi Patz and her work in, in theater. So my work as a music education uh, person is, I'm, I'm the chair of music education. I also work, um, I have research in disability studies, but my primary passion right now is this overall project that I call Blossoming Through the Ashes, and it's children's musical experiences within the Shoah. And I think about within because that's where they were making this music as Jewish artists. And I'm um, proposing a book project that will work with uh, two individuals who are very near and dear to my heart. The woman on the left is Dr. Dagmar Lidlova, who survived uh, Theresienstadt. She survived Auschwitz. She survived slave labor in Hamburg and Munich and the Allied bombings and she survived Bergen-Belsen. And uh, she uh, just passed away uh, this past April, but she spent a lot of time telling me about her musical experiences and what it meant to her because she was in the first productions of Brundi Bar, Hans Krauss's children's operette at Theresienstadt. So, and she didn't have a starring role. She had no starring role. But every time she would talk about interviewing and auditioning for Gideon Klein, the pianist, and Raphael Schechter, the conductor from Prague, she always sat a little taller and she said her parents were very proud of her. But it meant so many different things. And I think w one of the things we can draw from her experiences mm -hmm. is what those experiences might have to say for 21st century students. And for 21st century students who literally know nothing about the Shoah, and students who now, uh, for them, anti-Semitism is often just a part of life, and they don't know what it is. The little girl on the right is Josima Feldshu. I stumbled across her uh, thanks to a colleague at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Her music lies in the file of Rachel Auerbach at Yad Vashem. And thanks to a project that I was fortunate enough to collaborate with, performing the Jewish Archive from 2014-2018, uh, I was able to affect the world premieres of her, mu her music. This was a two and a half million dollar grant project sponsored by the Arts and Humanities Research Council of the United Kingdom. And uh, Edward was part of our final, um, our, our final meeting and celebration and festivities. We sponsored uh, six uh, 
six uh, festivals across the globe. Madison, Wisconsin, Prague and Terezin, York and Leeds, Cape Town, South Africa, and Sydney, Australia. And we brought together a number of scholars in theory, musicology, I was the music education pedagogue, and we brought work together that we had found in multiple archives, personal archives, um, personal archives meaning shopping bags that were given to some of my colleagues and you open it up and it is a piece of music that has been transported from the Warsaw Ghetto to Cape Town, South Africa, never performed before. And, and, and the stories go on and on pieces of music that were discovered uh, cleaning out uh, the basement of a synagogue in Helsinki, Finland. One of the first memorial pieces about the Shoah. So we collaborated, put this together, put these, um, this magnificent project together over the scope of four years and now we're starting to write about it. And my work was about Josima Felchu. But if you want to find more of what we're doing now, this is our new website that we're curating. And it's an online database where you can go online and find more, please, about what we're doing. And I always put out a plea that if you know of people that have things sitting in their attics, in their basement, or the back of a closet, um, that is that you think might be something all of it is valuable please let me know please, and i will or edward let us know and we will make sure it gets into scholars hands because this is um, quite a treasure we've got going so my current projects so blossoming um, through the Ashes it contains a number of different projects. I'm working on a book um, that takes the interviews of um, Czech survivors of the Shoah, and this is very different uh, because we have a US perspective, and I've also been studying the uh, oral histories at the Terezin Memorial, and also the Jewish Museum of Prague, and those are coming together. Uh, this summer, I'll be back at, in DC and working at Brandeis University. I've got a little cache of materials that I've found. Oops, sorry about that. We'll go back to that. And uh, worse are, uh, then working with Josima Feldshu's materials um, based in Warsaw, Poland, and interviews with fam her family descendants, which is really quite remarkable. Just an, an utmost privilege. I've got um, some new work connecting with children, school children in Prague. I have a small grant from the U.S. Embassy in Prague, and I just I was in Prague working with them on a theater piece and music this last week. Doing some um, one of the more interesting things that have just coming up and is occurring in real time is this new uh, branch called anti-Semitism in the Heartland. Baraboo responds to its youth and the Sig Heil. Uh, are all of you familiar with the photograph of the young man standing on the county courthouse in Baraboo, Wisconsin, giving the Sig Heil, the Heil Hitler salute? It's gone viral. And so even if you Google Sig Heil, it will come up under Wikipedia. And so a colleague of mine in Madison, who is a survivor of the Shoah, she and I will be going to Baraboo, and so we are presenting a program through music, art, and her own words about the damage that this causes and anti-Semitism. Their purpose is uh, they want to engage in healing, and my question is, healing for whom? Is it because Baraboo is so embarrassed that their kids don't know any better? So um, hard questions that I'll be asking. So I also work um, at several conferences, mostly European conferences, and this summer I'll be taking this to Tel Aviv, and uh, which I'm very, very excited about. Two courses have come out of this work. Uh, I work also with another member of Jewish Studies, uh, Rachel Brenner, 
and we've created a course on Holocaust literature, music, testimony, and memory, and I'm teaching a new course on music and genocide this semester in the School of Music, and we're looking at music as it's instrumentalized not only for uplift, all too often we think about music that elevates and uplift, what we found also there's new research from Eastern Europe that tells us that music was in instrumentalized for shame, for torture, and humiliation on the part of the SS. So we're, we're, we're studying this. So one of the things is how are we going to fund this? So thank you to the um, AHRC, to the United States Embassy, the University of Wisconsin uh, College of Letters and Science, and also uh, WARF, the Wisconsin Alumni Research Fund. So if you're a UW alum, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. And um, this is, I just want to share with you, this is a score written by this little girl, Josima Felchu, in 1940 in the Warsaw Ghetto. In 1939, we know that the Germans crushed Poland and entered, and then the ghetto was created. She wrote this. This is one of her first pieces. We don't have time to play it, but I can point you in the right places if you want to listen to her music. We do have that online, thanks to Performing the Jewish Archives. And uh, that's it. And then this is Dr. Lieblova I shared with you before. This is her family photo. She is my bookend for uh, my project and bringing all of these together. So that's a, a very quick look at what I'm doing.